Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today will be a review of winning trades. So I'm working on my charts to visually make it easier to see when stocks are beaten up or maybe even overbought. And as you can see, I've made some changes, a lot more colorful. What I'm trying to do is make it more obvious uh, more bells and whistles for when something is beaten up. For example, I have here Palantir stock, very popular right now. But when when would have been the best time to buy it? When it was cheap. It also would have been the scariest. The stock was down, and I'm trying to show when something is oversold to give to give me more confidence at the very bottom when palantir was 6 7 dollars it was below the 200 day moving average those are the big yellow lines and this purple just shows some indication of being deeply below the 100 day moving average so that marks our bottom and crossing price action of 200 day moving average was confirmation that something good was happening. Also, when Palantir was beaten up, they were more attractive on a price to sales basis and they weren't positive yet on earnings, but they were getting less and less negative. And a new metric that I've been looking at is their current assets and specifically their stock price market cap compared to working capital. And it was five times working capital. So that's the review of Palantir. Now, it is way more expensive than it should be. I wouldn't be buying Palantir at this price level. And to confirm that, we just go to Seeking Alpha or any analysis spot. Palantir has a forward PE of 187. And let's look at what analysts expect the future earnings to be. So while Palantir is growing, the forward PEs are a lot more expensive. So even if we hold Palantir for 10 years and it meets the analyst expectations, it would still be a 35 PE stock, which would make it unprofitable most likely to hold so I would no longer want to be too too excited about Palantir at this price but it was a lot cheaper before let's see it's now forward price to sales for 2025 46 times sales when we thought it was attractive it was only eight times sales so Trying to get a growth stock way below 10 times sales would be the goal. And taking money off the table when it's 40 or 50 times sales would be a good idea, at least in the long run. So that's example number one, Palantir. Another one I want to look at is Meta, because Meta was also a cheap stock when it was identified and that one again sold off way below the 200 day moving average from high to low it went down 76 percent and it was deep below the 200 day moving average that's another symptom that we look for 52 percent below the 200 day moving average and then we look at the fundamental info that was two times sales. Two times sales, very attractive in the blue. 
price to cash flow was five, also very attractive. Anything below 20 is attractive and price to cash flow was five at the bottom. Earnings yield was almost 11%, hugely attractive. Anything above 8% earnings yield is considered deep value. And they were trading five times their working capital, their short-term their short assets, which I consider um, working capital. So that ended up being the bottom, and sure enough, it went up. Let's look at Meta now. I don't think it's extremely expensive. Forward PE is 27, that's not too bad. And well, growth is in the t in the teens, so not extremely attractive growth, but not an extremely expensive price. So it's probably fairly priced at these levels. And as as the earnings continue to grow, it'll it'll grow as well. So not a deep value though. Price to sales. So if this is a good example, if Facebook is a good example of a fairly valued company, look look at the price to sales. Nine, eight, seven times sales. And this is a probably a fairly valued company that's still growing. So Palantir compared to Facebook, quite different, quite different. So I would rather be in Meta than in Palantir at these valuations. So those are two examples right there. And again, we're just trying to reinforce the what it looks like when companies are beat up and probably deep value. The third example that I'm going to give is ExxonMobil. So ExxonMobil also sold off hard in 2020 from the highs to the lows was down over 60%. The stock was way below the 200 moving average, over 50% below the 200 day moving average. And then I have a line right here, which is tangible book value. And that takes into account all the hard assets, no intangibles, no goodwill. And that's an indication of what's what the company has, what it owns on the books. And notice the book value was around 43 and the stock went as low as worse than 25. So, so buying below tangible book for ExxonMobil is usually a good idea. Um, let's look at the financials. Price to sales was cheap, under, under 50 cents price to sales. Price to cash flow, very cheap, four times cash flow. Earnings yield, 11%. Also, just, just like Facebook, Facebook also had 11% earnings yield. That's PE upside down, in case you're wondering. Uh, Short-term assets, or uh, current total current assets was $50 billion, and the price to short-term current assets were uh, was three times. So also a good indication and once it bottomed, once it crossed the 200-day moving average, it kept going. And the stock is where it is now. Counting dividends. This chart takes into account dividends. It's more than four times higher. So uh, those are three examples of stocks that get oversold, then recover, and then rise. ExxonMobil is still attractive, 7% yield. So th those are examples. Oversold, those are, that's an idea of what a company can do after a, let's call it a crash. So lastly, I'm going to finish up with some ideas that I'm looking at that I think can also do what these stocks have done. And the way I do that is I'm going to use a valuation worksheet. Down below, I've got a bunch of companies with, with earnings and, and valuations. 
and this is a filter that I'm running. It sorts and filters all the data below. So this is maybe a dozen, a dozen stocks that make the, the screener. So Canadian Solar is on there. Uh, a couple others that stand out is IQ, which I keep making videos on IQ. It's a, it's a long form streaming company in China. Momo, another one attractive. Pinduo Duo, PDD is on there. Baidu barely makes this list because I'm screening for 40% potential Kager stocks. Uh, Intel is on there, but I'm skeptical that it can actually deliver, but it is on there and Mobley in Israel. The one I'm gonna cover right now is IQ. And the earnings yield for this year is attractive at 11%. Next year, 15% based on analyst expectations. So if the business didn't grow based on current, current earnings, and forward earnings, this would be attractive right now because that's more than 10% on your money and the earnings are expected to grow. I think this is a $2 stock and they've, at their best, they've earned so far 40 cents, uh, which was, I believe, last year, 2023. So the earnings power is there and they're only expected to make 25 cents this year. So earnings could at one point be twice as much as they are now. So I, I have to come up with some potential number for valuation. This could be a $16 stock uh, in five years, or it could be a, even higher than that, 39 using rosier, more optimistic valuations. But let's go look at the chart of IQ. IQ used to be as much as $28, has gone as low as $1.67. Currently, it's down 92%. Visually on the chart, yes, it's down below the 200-day moving average. And it's in this oversold area based on the 100-day moving average. And it's already rallied once before for more than 60%. When China announced stimulus, this was a nice trade. And it's come back down. Notice here, tangible book value. It's below tangible book value. Just, just uh, That's been a good indication of value. Uh, one for IQ stocks. Right for some of these Chinese stocks, it worked for Exxon. IQ is definitely not Exxon, but I really think what IQ could be doing is similar to what Exxon did. Something of a double bottom. Let's look at the financials, price or the ratios anyway. Price to sales, zero point five. Anything below two is interesting. Two times sales or, or better is interesting. Seven times cash flow, anything below 20 starts to be good. 9% earnings yield is what they show right now. But, the, but their best quarter is yet to come. Usually winter, they have better quarters. And they have short-term or current assets of 1.3 billion they do have over a billion in cash. They do have some debt, and that's why their enterprise value, which factors the debt, is a little higher than the market cap. Let's, so, uh, visually, to me, I think there's a good chance that this could be somewhat of a double bottom. This $3 level where we bumped before I think that's the V. Because they earn so much earnings yield wise, if IQ could pop through that three, I think it 
if they deliver earnings, it'll go back up to sixes. So that's why I'm interested in the stock. Um, if I zoom out, I have some, some these green bars give me some potential valuation based on their, their expectations. This could be a $10 stock in a few years. And then I have this table of potential values that I used with, I made with uh, using the analyst expectations and a 25 multiple. This is what I think could happen if IQ delivers. Should be worth $6 this year. Could be worth that or more over the next few years. But IQ has to deliver the earnings. It has to grow. They earn, they're expected to earn 26 cents. Hopefully over time they'll earn a dollar. Some multiple on a dollar is what IQ could be worth. I think at least $25 would be reasonable. And some as it grows over time. This is more of a long-term investment. But the best time to buy these long-term investments is there is when they're beat up. Because if you buy a bunch when it's down and then it goes up, you can sell half and keep the rest for free. Uh, so again, double bottom potential below tangible book value. Uh, Exxon Mobil, not the same company, not the same trade, totally different time frame. Uh, they had somewhat of a double bottom. Then it broke through some V at the top, confirming the double bottom. And then it kept going up. More, more than quadrupling. So maybe something like that could be happening. And uh, back then, the U.S. was having a lot of trouble. We weren't driving as much. Oil was down a lot. We were in a mini recession. It was the pandemic, of course. Uh, China is going through their... Uh, not recession, but they're having an economic deflationary spiral because of real estate, and it's affecting the job market. It's affecting business. Uh, China as a whole, it's quite volatile. So when they announced stimulus, FXI rallied up a bit. It's pulled back. Maybe that's a bull flag. I don't know. Same thing with the K-Web. When they announced stimulus, the whole ETF rallied over 50%, and now it's pulled back about a quarter from there. So maybe there's a bull flag. Maybe we go higher. I don't know. That's my speculation. But I really like reviewing past trades to see how they acted. If you look at the ETF, anytime the K-Web goes into this purple level, that purple level is just 25% below the 100 moving average. It's just a technical level that I'm using. Anytime it got deeply oversold, it was a place of value. Same thing with the FXI. If, if it gets into that purple zone, which is 25% below the 100-day moving average, it's been a place of value. Uh, IQ is way more volatile, and we are now in that purple zone. It just means it's been over. It's been it's been sold a lot, but if it's a bad company, it will keep going down. If it's a profitable business, it will attract investors. So that's all I have for now. Hopefully, this was useful to you. If you have any questions on valuation. If you have any criticisms, same thing, go ahead and put them in the comments and we will chat again soon. Cheers.